to rash a trial for him. He's gentle and not fearful. What? I say, my foot, my tutor. Put thy sword up, traitor. Thou who makes the show but dares not strike. Thy conscience is so possessed with guilt. Come from thy ward, for I can here disarm thee with this stick and make thy weapon drop. Beseech you, father. Hang not on my garments. Sir, have pity. I'll be a surety. Silence! One more word, and shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. What? An advocate for an imposter? Hush! I think this is mo no such shape as he, having seen but him and Caliban. Foolish daughter, to the most of men this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections are most humble, then. I have no ambition to see a goodlier man. Come on, obey. Thy nerves are in thy infancy again, and thou hast no vigor in them. So they are. My spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. My father's loss, the weakness which I feel, the wreck of all my friends, nor this man's threats to whom I am subdued, are but light to me. Might I but through my prison once a day behold this maid. All corners else of the earth let liberty make use of. Space enough have I in such a prison. It works. Come on. Thou hast done well, Ariel. Follow me. Hawk what thou else must do for me. My father is of a better nature than he appears by speech, sir. This is a lot which should came from him. Thou shalt be set free as the mountain winds, but then exactly to all points of my command. To the syllable. Come, follow. Speak not for him. Sir, be merry! You have cause, so have we all, of joy for our escape. Pray thee, peace. <laughs> he takes his comfort like cold porridge. Methinks, sir, our garments are now as fresh as when we put them on first in Africa, at the marriage of the king's fair daughter, Clarabelle, to the king of Tunis. Oh, t'was a sweet marriage, and we prosper well in our return. Is not, sir, my doublet as fresh as the first day I wore it? I mean... In a sort? That sort was well fished for. When I wore it, sir, at your daughter's marriage? You cram these words into my ears against the stomach of my sense. Wherefore, I never would have gone there knowing for coming thence. My son is lost. O oh, thou my heir of Naples and of Milan, what fish hath made his meal on thee? Oh, sir, he may live. I saw him beat the surges under him and ride upon their backs. I do not doubt he came alive. Okay. No! No, he is gone. You know, sir, you may thank yourself for this great loss, with that you not bless our Europe with your daughter, but rather lose her to an African, who hath least cause to wet the grief on it. Pretty. You were near to an importuned otherwise, but by all of us, and the fair soul herself, with between loathness and obedience, which endless a beam should bow, we have lost your son, I fear, forever, and the fault is your own. So is the dearest of the loss. <laughs> Lady Sebastian, the truth you speak doth lack some gentleness, and it's time to speak it in. You rub the sore when you should bring the plaster. Very well. It is foul weather in us all, good sir, when you are cloudy. Had I plantation of this isle, my lord, in the commonwealth, I would by contraries execute all things, for no kind of traffic would I admit, no name of magistrate, letters should not be known, riches and poverty and use of service, none, contracts, succession, born, bound of land, kilt and vineyard, none, no use of metal or, or of corn or, or of wine or wood, and no occupation, all men idle all. And women, too, but innocent and pure, and no sovereignty. You would be king on it. All things, in common nature, should produce without sweat or endeavor to feed my innocent people. Oh, no marrying among the people, then? 
Oh, I don't for the name. I would, <laughs> with such perfection, govern, my lady, to excel the golden age. <laughs> well, save his majesty and long live Gonzalo. And you. <laughs> Did you mark me, sir? Crazy no more. Thou dost talk nothing to me. I do believe, your highness. And it did minister occasion to this fine lady to laugh at nothing. No, it was you I laughed at. Who in this kind of merry fooling and nothing to you? So you may continue and laugh at nothing still. Oh, I me asleep. For I am very heavy. Well, just sleep and hear me. So soon asleep. I wish mine eyes wouldn't with them shut up my thoughts. I feel they are inclined to do so. Oh, sir! Do not omit the heavy author of it. It seldom does it sorrow when it doth. It is a comforter. I, my lord, will guard your person while you take your rest and watch your safety. Thank you. <laughs> Ponderous heavy. <sighs> What a strange drowsiness it does possesses them. No doubt the quality of the climate. Why doth and not in mine eyelids sink? I feel not compelled to sleep in my spare so nimble. They fell together all as by a thunderstroke, and they dropped as by consent. What might were these Sebastian? Oh, what might? Oh, no more. And yet. Methinks I see it in thy face. But thou shouldst be. Well, the opportunity speaks thee, and my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon thy head. Noble Sebastian, the length of opportunity sleep, or die, rather. Weakest while thou art waking. The king's son alive, tis it's impossible that he's undrowned. Or that he that sleeps here swims. So tell me, then, who is the next queen of Tunis? Clarabelle. She that is Queen of Tunis will be heir of Naples. Tis true, my brother's daughter's Queen of Tunis, so she is heir of Naples. Twixt regions there is some space. Space, whichever cubit seems to cry out, how shall that Clarabelle measure us back to Naples? We'll keep in Tunis and let Sebastian wake. What if it were death that hath seized them? What a sweet this is for your advancement. Draw thy sword. One stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest, and I, the queen, shall be. My master, through his eye, foresees the danger ye, his friend, are in. Awake! <laughs> awake. <laughs> now, good angels, preserve the king! Why, right now, now, oh, wait. Why are you drawn? Wherefore this ghastly looking? What's the matter? Whilst I was here securing your repose, even now, I heard a hollow bellowing like bull. No, 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 like lion. Did it not wake you? It struck my ear most terribly. I heard nothing. What then? Did it fright a monster here? To make an earthquake? No doubt it was the sound of a whole herd of lions. Heard you this, Gonzalo? Upon my honor, sir, I heard a humming. And a strange one, too, which did wake me. It is best we stand upon our guard, or it's that we quit this place. Keep drawing your weapon. Lead us off this ground and let us make further search for my poor son. I didn't keep him from these beasts. Or he is sure upon the island. Lead away. Prospero, my lord, shall know what I have done. So, King, go on safely to seek thy son. Look like a foul bomber that would shed his liquor. 
Oh, it's such a thunder as it did before. I know not where to hide my head. That same black cloud cannot choose but fall by powerful victory. <laughs> How we here? A man or a fish? <laughs> Dead or alive? Mm.